In this lesson, we're going to determine the numbers of solutions of linear systems. We're going to use linear systems to solve real life problems. So there's three different possibilities when it comes to the number of solutions of a linear system of equations. Okay, so down here, if you see, a system of linear equations can have one solution, no solutions, or infinitely many solutions. So if there's one solution, which is everything that we've done so far, that's when the lines intersect on a graph. Okay, no solutions is if the lines are parallel, aka they will not intersect on a graph ever. Okay, and then infinitely many solutions if, is if the lines are the same. So here we actually have two lines on top of each other because they're the exact same line. In that case, every single point on that line will be a solution. So there's an infinite amount. So in this example, we're going to solve the system of linear equations, okay? And we're actually going to do this in two ways. The first way we're going to do it is by graphing. So I see that in the first equation right here, I have y equals 2x plus 1. My slope is 2, and you can rewrite that as a fraction if you want. My y-intercept is going to be 1, which is the ordered pair 0, 1. So I'll graph that. And then I'll go up to right one, down to left one, and so on. Now I'm going to draw my line through this. All right, now in my next color, I will do the other equation. I see that the slope is equal to 2, a.k.a. 2 over 1 again. And right away, we might notice that these are going to be parallel lines because they have the same slope. But anyway, we're still going to graph it. My y-intercept is going to be negative 5 here, which is the ordered pair 0, negative 5. So if I plot that right here, and then I use my slope, which is 2 over 1, up to right 1, and so on, I see that these two lines are never going to intersect because they're parallel. I'll draw my line through there. So this is a no solution case. We do not have any points that are going to be the same for each line. So this is a no solution case. Now, if you didn't have a graph available or you didn't want to solve this by graphing, we could use substitution. So I'm going to rewrite my equations, which if I look back up, they were y equals 2x plus 1 and y equals 2x minus 5. And whenever I'm substituting, that's when I plug in one of my equations for the other one. So I'm going to say this y value, because this y value is alone, I'm going to plug this in for this y value. So if I do that, my new equation becomes 2x plus 1 equals 2x minus 5. Remember, I just plug in the y expression in for y, because we want to know when these y's are the same. Okay. Well, my next step I'm going to do is subtract 2x on both sides to move my variables. But if you notice, when I do that, they cancel. So now I just get 1 equals negative 5. So what this is saying is that these two lines intersect when 1 is equal to negative 5. Or the solution to the system of linear equations is when 1 equals negative 5. Well, when is that the case? Never. This is never going to happen. 1 is never going to equal negative 5. So we can reject that. And that is another instance of it being a no solution case. So we've solved this in two different ways, by substitution and by graphing. And both ways, we get no solution. For this example, we're also going to solve the system of linear equations. Okay, So we have a graph here. So we'll graph this, and then we will uh, solve. And we'll solve by elimination, because this looks like a good situation to use elimination. Anyway, to solve, I'm just going to convert these both into slope-intercept form. So when I have negative 2x plus y equals 3, I'll add 2x to both sides. I get y equals 2x and then plus 3 because it's a positive 3. My slope is 2. My y-intercept is 3. So I'm going to plot 3 on the graph right here. And then use my slope of 2 to fit all the other points on this line. And remember, that's going to be 2 over 1 for my rise over run. So up to right 1 and so on, up to right one. And I can also go down to left one. All right, so now I'm gonna draw a line through this. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solve this equation, our second equation, and then graph that and see where they intersect. So I have negative four x plus two y 
equals six, I'll add four X on both sides, and then I get two Y equals four X plus six, and then I'm gonna divide by two by every single term, and I'm gonna get Y equals two X plus three. Well, look at that, it's the exact same line. Okay. Now, if I, if I did the same thing, I would just be plotting these points again. But since I have the same line, these lines are going to be on top of each other. And if you remember, this is the case where we have an infinite amount of solutions. So all the solutions of this line, every single point on this line is a solution. So if it says to solve, what we'd write is the equation y equals 2x plus 3 because every single ordered pair on this line is a solution to this system of equations. Now, if it asks us how many solutions there are, there are an infinite amount of solutions. So infinitely many solutions. So this is the infinitely many solutions case, and our solutions are every single point on this line y equals 2x plus 3. And now we're done with this one. The perimeter of a trapezoidal piece of land is 48 kilometers. The perimeter of a rectangular piece of land is 144 kilometers. Write and solve a system of linear equations to find the values of x and y. Well, if you remember, perimeter is just when we add up all of the sides of the polygon. Okay? So in this case, I just have to add 2x plus 6y plus 4x plus 6y, and this is going to equal 48. So I'll write that as an equation. 2x plus 6y plus 4x plus 6y, and that all equals 48, because this is for the trapezoid. And then if I'm simplifying this, I have 2x and 4x, that becomes 6x, and then plus 6y plus 6y is 12y, is equal to 48, okay? So that is the first equation. And then for the second equation, I have 18y plus 9x plus 18y plus 9x, and that's going to equal 144 kilometers. And in this case, I can just combine my like terms before I even write them all down. So 9x and 9x will give me 18x plus, and then 18y and 18y is going to be 36y, and that is going to equal 144. So I'm given a graph here, but I'm actually first going to use uh, the elimination method in order to solve this system of equations, and then we'll graph to check our answer. So in elimination, we're used to multiplying numbers, but you can actually divide. Uh, in this case, I'm going to multiply the top equation by 3 because I see that the 6 and the 18, the way I get from 6 to 18, is multiplied by 3. But I could divide something on this bottom equation if I wanted to. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to rewrite this equation. So it's going to be 6x plus 12y equals 48. And I know I'm going to multiply this by 3 to match up to this equation. So 3 times 6 is 18, and then plus 36y equals, and then 48 times 3. If you didn't know that, you could do it out. Get 24, and then 12 plus 2 is 144. Now, if you notice, when I multiply this whole entire equation by 3, I get the exact same equation here. And you might think you know what's going to happen, but let's just do it out to test. So if I bring down this equation again, 18x plus 36y equals 144. If I use elimination right now and subtract these two equations, well, the 18x's are going to cancel. I'll put a parenthesis here. 18x minus 18x is 0. 36y minus 36y is also 0, and 144 minus 144 equals 0. So this is a 0 equals 0 case. So basically what this is saying is, zoom out for a second before I say, these two equations are equal to each other when 0 is equal to 0. Well, when is 0 equal to 0? Always. So that means that these two equations are always equal to each other. Okay? And that makes sense because they're the same equation. Okay? So all the solutions are of x and y that are on this line will be solutions to this system of equations. So this is another infinitely many solution case. Now what I want to do is just graph this to check. If I solve this equation into slope intercept form, I get 6x plus 12y equals 48. 
subtract 6x, and I get 12y equals negative 6x plus 48. And if I divide each term by 12, I get y equals negative 1 half x plus 4. Okay, so I'll graph this one. I'm going to zoom in on the graph. So my y-intercept is going to be 4, and my slope is negative 1 half. So I'll go down 1, right 2, and so on. Now, if I do the same thing for this equation, 18x plus 36y equals 144, I'll do that right here. I'm going to subtract 18x on both sides, and I get 36y equals negative 18 plus 144. And I'll divide both sides by 36, aka every term. Okay, I'm going to get y equals 1 half x, negative 1 half x, I forgot the x here, sorry. And then 144 divided by 36 is also 4. So I see that this is the exact same equation when I simplify it either way. Okay, and we already saw that. So that means that the line on the graph is going to be the same. So this is going to be another infinitely many solution case. So if we look back at our question right here, it says write and solve a system of equations to find the values of x and y. So our word answer is we can use any x, y pair on the line y equals negative 1 half x plus 4. Now the only thing that I would add to this is that because we're dealing with distances, we're going to want our x and y values to both be positive, okay? Because there's no such thing as a negative distance, and then a zero distance would make the shape not exist. So I'm going to also put that x is greater than 0 and y is greater than 0. But anyway, we've successfully solved this system of equations, and now we're done.